Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube here in the New York Stock Exchange. I'm John Furrier, your host. Of course, we have our East Coast Palo Alto studio, and here at the NYSC connecting Silicon Valley and Wall Street as part of our NYSC Wired program and community bringing the two worlds together. Got a great topic kicking off this week with our AI Factory series. It's going to be an ongoing series featuring the leaders who are building out these large-scale data centers, the infrastructure needed to power the generation that's coming of software, new software stacks, new chips, technology at power, AI native applications that ultimately create a better society and better productivity environment. Steve Klinger's here, Vice President of Product at Light Matter. They're doing amazing work in one of the hottest areas that we've been covering, um, photonics, uh, interconnects, the secret sauce to connecting all these big chips that are powering uh, the AI. Steve, thank you for joining us today. And thanks for coming in from California. Oh, thank you, John. Appreciate the opportunity. Nice to talk with you today. So you heard my little monologue there. AI factors is a term that was introduced by Jensen Wong. Kind of abstract away to the general world about all the hard stuff that goes on under the covers around making AI work. AI factors is a very simple concept. Oh, yeah, it produces tokens. It's, it produces mm -hmm. stuff. It provides benefits. Okay, I get that. But there's a lot of work going on, okay? And I'd love to get in with you. You guys specialize in an area like I said, is one of the hottest areas right now of making high speed connections between things, devices and chips. Can you talk about what you guys are doing, where you guys are in the progress of it and some of the success and momentum you have? Yeah, sure. So at, at Light Matter, what we're focused on really is unlocking the interconnect bottlenecks in data centers. So if, if you look at what's happened over the last you know, a few decades, the the performance of the compute has scaled actually quite well. Uh, but the interconnect, in other words, the, the connectivity between all the compute chips has, has grown at a much slower pace. And so what that's led to at this point is that the, the performance, you know, continued performance scaling for AI is, is really being hindered by that interconnect bottleneck. So what we're doing at Light Matter is really utilizing silicon photonics to provide much higher bandwidth and also enable much higher connectivity in terms of the number of inputs and outputs that can come into and out of each chip and using light to transmit the data to connect much larger numbers of compute units together in a much tighter fashion to, to continue the AI performance scaling. So that really kind of, if you zoom out on that, I would like you to explain, because this hits the two of the hottest areas right now that architecturally it's the scale up and scale out areas. Normally the discussion has been trade-offs between the two. Could you talk about how you guys are intersecting that piece and where you fit in? Is, is there one side or the other? You mentioned number of, I don't think you said nodes, but systems. Yeah. Um, scale up, obviously high bandwidth, tightly coupled systems. Um, but now you talk about systems, connecting systems too. So Normally, it's like a balance. Okay, I got to get more of this. How do you yeah. weigh in on that? What's your position? What's your view? We, we really fit in both places, but if you look at, at how most AI data center racks are built today, you have copper-based connectivity within the racks. And then once you go beyond the number of compute units that fit inside the rack, then you're going to pluggable optics. The trouble is, is the amount of bandwidth you have is, there is, is yeah. much lower. So you've yeah. created a choke point. So what we're doing is bringing the optics directly to all the chips so that you're not constrained in the scale up domains, if you will, by how many chips you can fit in one rack. You can, you can scale the connectivity across many racks. And so now many racks can act you know, in, together as that scale up domain. Yeah, and the you know the latencies and the, the the amount of bandwidth that we can escape from the chip also is is dramatically higher than what you can do if you're just connecting electrically. And copper does a job at a short distance is not really good for that rack. Yeah, relatively rack. short distances, you know, a meter or two, kind of within the rack, and 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 it particularly as the speed of the signals get higher and higher, you know, that that distance is really limited. So with optics now, we we've completely blown away that that limitation. You could now go, you know, hundreds of meters, uh, uh, you know, across many racks in the data center, uh, as opposed to just having, you know, copper-based connectivity with really constrained to that to that one rack. 
could you scope the um, bandwidth throughput, the throughput side, and then the energy per bit piece? Because this is where we're seeing a lot of discussion, right? Energy is yeah. huge, right? So, I mean, no, that, you're absolutely right. So, so you, you, you have to go, you know, optical, like I said, once you, you get outside of the rack to connect larger numbers of, of, of uh, these, these racks together and in, into a, a larger pod. The, if you look at what the power consumption of a pluggable optical transceiver is, which is the prevalent way of, of, of doing it in the industry today, the picojoule per bit, you know, is in the, the teens uh, uh, to, let's say, 15 to 20 picojoules per bit. You contrast that with an integrated uh, silicon photonic optical approach where we're landing chips, you know, directly on top of photonics with such as with our, our passage technology, talking a, a few picojoules per bit. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's a dramatic savings in terms of the energy efficiency for that communication. You know, in our um, CUBE interviews, we get a lot of linguistics, a lot of jargon. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to run something by you and I get your reaction to it. And I, and I love jargon, by the way. It's great for AI. It makes, makes the words uh, explode. But here's a, here's a phrase. I want to explain this to me. I hear this a lot. We have dense scale-up racks and we have a need for long-reach scale-out clusters. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And how do you fit into that? This is where it kind of hits the point for photonics. What is a yeah, dense so, scale-out you know, rack? A scope that is, how, what is a dense? Is it like, how crowded is it? I, I mean, the, these racks are incredibly dense. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're packing really as, as much as they can within the rack, again, because they're constrained right now by having to connect everything physically very close to each other uh, yeah. with, yeah. with the, the copper-based interconnect. So it is dense. Uh, in, 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 in that regard. And long, the, uh, long reach scale out cluster. What's long reach? Yeah. Mean? Long reach means, you know, connecting many racks across a data center floor together. So whether that's, you know, tens or hundreds of meters and, and then when you're going in between, you know, data center installations, that's, you know, that, that, that can be even much larger distances. Okay. So multi-track, multi-rack, I should, I mean, multi-rack I get, um, mm -hmm. what about Metro? I'm hearing more about scale across, okay, as a, as a term. It's being kicked around a lot, a lot, of, a lot of hype around scale across, which implies connecting data centers to data centers. Um, yeah. In my mind, I'm like, well, that's our latency issue. Um, what does that mean to you guys and, and how real and what is that from a usability standpoint? Is there a distance limitation? Where does optics fit in? I mean, light is better, right? You can speed the light. Yeah, I mean, light light based connectivity has been around, you know, connecting, mm -hmm. you know, metros together for 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 a long time. So it is, you know, the, the optics is there for for that type of connectivity. To your point, uh, you know, the the larger the you know physical infrastructure, things like latency do come into play because you know light travels at you know what five. Uh, nanoseconds per meter plus or minus and so you know there there are latency constraints you know with with that distance on system traffic issues what are the key trade-offs and what are some of the different bottleneck challenges uh that are out there yeah i'd say at light matter with our passage technology what what we're trying to do is really unlock the the connectivity at the chip level so if, if you look at the latest generation of GPUs or, or XPUs, the, the amount of, of shoreline of the chip that's available to escape data is, is highly constrained. Typically, you have memory on the east and west side of the chip, and, and really the I.O. is just coming out of the, the north and the south. And, and there's a limited amount of shore at, shoreline, as, as people call it, on that, that okay. chip edge which means you can only fit a certain number of signals and that the increases in those signal rates aren't increasing all that fast. Yeah. Right? And we're starting to hit some fundamental limits there. So what, what we're trying to do at the chip level using 3D integration is now, instead of only having that, the shoreline of the chip to escape uh, the, the, the data and communication, you can actually locate the high-speed signals into the interior of the chip. Mm -hmm. So now you have a, a an area-based scaling for the I/O instead of just a shoreline-based uh, scaling. Got it. And so we're enabling, you know, GPU providers or or network switch chip providers and the hyperscalers also who are building those type of okay. chips. 
to leverage that 3D integration to get instead of you know a few terabits per second of, of bandwidth into and out of an XPU, tens of terabits per second. The terabits is a huge point. That's a, that's a great throughput, and that's a key performance. I love the shoreline example. It's like a beachfront. My mind went to like all the houses trying to get beachfront property. You know, you got some mansions that have a good swath, some don't. Um, that brings up a point around cooling, and you're seeing a lot of uh, liquid cooling. How do you get the heat density down? I mean, heat heat down. Uh, and we're seeing co-packaged optics become part of that. What's the impact of um, photonics placement where you do things does that impact design and and are you guys in that area i mean yeah, here's yeah, so a lot I, of that you know a lot of the xpus and you know are are liquid cooled you know you're talking about you know a couple thousand watt watt chips nowadays so uh, silicon photonics and co package we're, we're 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 really in that exact market that you're talking about we have you know temperature stabilized uh, photonic circuitry that can live right within that that chip package. We have a lot of the uh, the technology that we've developed inside of light matter is aimed at uh, not only just implementing the core functionality but making sure that it's fully stable across temperature variations across other physical disturbances that might occur in the data center things like fibers being, uh, you know, uh, yeah. being moved or lightning strikes or or things like that. So we've we focused a lot on the robustness aspect of it. Yeah. But yeah, the the, the photonics is are extremely well temperature controlled, and uh, so it, in in this exact environment that you're mentioning, we've we yeah. we worked on ensuring that it's a, a really hardened solution there. Like I said, this is a really critical infrastructure component at the system level, and systems thinking is now mainstream, which I love. We love on the cube because we like to talk about systems a lot, as well as mm-hmm. you know cloud and other things. Of course, we love we, we love hardware and software. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys are at the co- convergence of scale up, scale out, which I like. It reminds me of the little hyper convergence days in the cloud pre cloud that us- ushered in massive growth. Where are you guys on the momentum side? Manufacturing volume. Can you share yeah. some momentum? So where where we're at is we're you know we're. We're in the process, really, of bringing out with our lead customers the initial production variants of our passage-based uh, solutions. So we've we've done several generations of what I would call test silicon, to prove out all of the, you know, fundamental capability characterization and and get the technology proven and hardened. We recently demonstrated uh, a 16 wavelength uh, silicon photonic. Uh, blank on a single fiber, uh, which was a really dramatic achievement. Uh, we we made that uh, that public just just recently, but we're we're now in the process really of intercepting customer uh, rollouts on their next generation designs that will be hitting production over the next couple of years. Well, Steve, it's great to have you on the program um, of the convergence in this infrastructure that's enabling all kinds of new growth, even on net new data center build outs, the on-prem activity uh, with the, these large scale systems that are acting like basically supercomputing. They're supercomputers. We're in the supercomputer era right now. So it's really fun. Um, as the VP of product, you got the keys to the kingdom, uh, as they say uh, in the business. What's the coolest thing you're working on right now or um, feature or secret sauce um, that uh, people should know about or you're excited about um, knowing you got what the customers are doing on the roadmap, because you guys have good delivery schedules, you have good visibility on, the, on what's going to happen. What's the coolest thing? What are you excited about? Yeah, I, I think what really excites me is just the scale at which we've been able to implement this this technology. It it's like we're we're delivering the equivalent of forty plus optical transceivers in a little optical engine that plugs onto one ship edge. And so it's it's like such a dramatic in- improvement, both in terms of bandwidth as well as how in ports we the term radix is what we yeah. use. It's such a dramatic expansion in the radix and the bandwidth of what we can escape out of the chip, and we can fit uh, into really any sort of packaging flow. So we use you know standard integration techniques that fit in with with how people are building chips and systems today. So it's 
the, the exciting thing to me is like just the opportunity to deliver this and, and, you know, and, and by doing that, unlock the next wave of, of performance yeah. well, that ultimately translates into like how long it takes to train a model. All right. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's things that we're fundamentally doing that can provide, you know, multiples of, of speed up in the time to train the next model that, yeah. that fires me up. That's awesome. And you know, just the terabit performance, multi terabit performance is phenomenal. Taking out hops on the network. I mean, these are like nerdy things, but this is good. Thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. And uh, thanks again. All right. Take care. Take care. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We are here at the NYSE CUBE Studios, NYSE Wired Community and Program, bringing this ongoing series on AI. Very large scale systems are redefining the future of the data center, um, distributed computing. It's the hardware, it's the chips, it's the connections that make it all happen. As this moves fast and accelerates through, more value is going to be built on top of it. Again, that's going to open up massive innovation around AI native applications, data movement, all these things that are going to make things more efficient, more energy efficient. Again, this is the focus. Of course, we love bringing that data to you. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.